So, Owen's got the engine out, as you can see. It's all here. And just look at the size of this thing. Absolutely ridiculous. I think they're about 50 kilos ever than an auto and manual or something stupid like that. At least 30 anyway. I think a normal one's 30 kilos. 40 or 50 kilos anyway. Stupid. Ridiculous how heavy it is. I might even weigh it just so I know because it's just mental how heavy they are. But anyway, it does pose another problem. We were hoping to put this manifold on, which is our Mark V Golf spare one that we take with us. But to be fair, I don't know why we take a spare manifold because we never break them. But you never know. You never know if we crash it and we smash it, we need to change it. So I thought we'll try this one on first and then see if the spare turbo that we take for the Golf would fit. So if you look here, ignore that this is sort of not bent out of the way. You might be better off looking at this side, Danny, because that's where the clearance issue is. So if you're looking here, this is a BMW housing, so like an E90, 330D housing. Let's just look here. We just absolutely tie it up against top of transfer case. So I thought we are going to be sort of limited by actuator. I think the actuator probably wouldn't really cause this needs to have an electronic portion on as well it wouldn't really have caused us too much grief or would at least be able to swing it out of the way but it's just not gonna happen so we stick it to the original plan i think i've got that wedged in there now so that can go back in spares for golf that manifold can go back in spares for golf so we stick it to the original plan and that is this manifold the original were on there, gone a bit rusty, which this didn't have a rain tray on for ages, which weren't good. It were all getting wet. Sounds like somebody's shoving something out there. Um, the reason we use mild steel on flanges, it's not as pretty after use, but it didn't warp. So if you use a stainless steel flange, it might be fine when you first put it on, but you'll get a thousand degrees EGTs going through that and it'll warp big time. So that's why we do it like that. So anyway, that's going back on and then 28 turbo easy just to rip it and it is to do that so ball bearing 28 is going on so hopefully we've got to split that gearbox apart put the diff in I'll stop that falling that radiator behind you split the gearbox apart for the diffing, which this has got a wave track going on, because I believe at the time of filming this anyway, the only company that make a diff for them, the DQ500, is the uh, is wave track. So we'll get that in there, and then Owen's oh, swapping all the bits over to the new engine, fire them in, and away we go. So hopefully it's not too big of a job. It's sort of all hinged upon how much hassle Paul has put in that diffing, but we'll see how they go. So, Steph's caddy engine, we finally got around to fully assembling it. We just had to take the water pump bracket off, which Paul's took away with him because Steph decided it's been on there a, a week or two when he wants to paint it. But anyway, he's painted the gearbox, so that looks a bit better because they're absolutely disgusting aluminium on these. And then this here is our little uh, oil cooler tech off plate. So instead of the heat exchanger, it's normally got this is going to have an external oil cooler mount. Um, so hopefully that keeps temps in this gearbox down. There's loads of oil in it. So I don't know if it's going to be a worry, but it'd be a good idea to do some testing on steps and uh, see what's what. So obviously the 28 turbos all bolted up. Still not got any more stuff on the front end, but it's all, this is literally ready to drop in. Then we've just got to throw transfer box on throw the dog bone mount and all that stuff on and then we can start working on the uh, electric water pump but this is going to be pretty much the same as what the uh, the golf score in it so we've got we've done these just because it's a little bit tight at the front rather than having an extra silicone hose and stuff but then we've got to weld weld some fittings onto this which is uh, what replaces the thermostat so still a fair bit of work to do so Paul's going to get Mark V shoved out that just had its post track day check over, compiled a list of things that we want to do to it. And um, yeah, we'll get this in, get it sorted, and hopefully it'll be running in the next day or so.
Right then, Steph's caddy, it's all in and running. I'm not going to try and start it yet because Paul's just messing about with boost pipe. I'll show you why when he comes back. He's just having a bit of massaging with drill. Um, so we put a fresh filter on while we're here. All the water pipe works on and we've sort of come up with a couple of ideas what we're going to do to make all this better because I'm not really happy with how we have to root things and cap things off and stuff. We might end up doing like a billet housing that's got some tappings in and stuff like that. But we'll see what happens. A couple of little bits to tweak and mess about with. Don't bang your head on that, it hurts like mad. So now we've got all the front end on, you can see the cooling system that we've got. So this radiator is one I had made absolute yonks ago. Um, just a sort of cheaper one, it's not, it's not fancy. But I had it made taller than a normal uh, radiator, just so that it'd be taller than the intercooler. So what we've, <clears throat> what we've had to do with this, like I don't know if we've done a video on the Mark V just yet, but on the Mark V we've chopped the intercooler down because the charge temps were always pretty good because we're normally going quite fast, but the radiator were always sort of getting a little bit hotter than we wanted to do. So basically what we've done on this, we've got a R standard S3 core, this is a 70 mil one. So it's got the bigger outlets, it's thicker down. It, thicker depth. So this is different to the one we've got on the Golf. The Golf we've just got the standard S3 one and that seems to work all right but we're not pushing the same power as what this is going to be doing. Then we've got the two oil coolers. So the one on the left is the engine oil cooler. The one on the right is a gearbox cooler. Now most of this is going to be covered up by the bumper and the number plate but the idea is we'll only really need that when we get to the track. Now when we get to the track if the charge temps are really low and the coolant temps start giving us some grief or the oil temps start giving us some grief, we've left a bit of room so we can chop the intercooler down a bit and lift the, lift the oil coolers up and put them where the intercooler should be so that we've got only two layers. Because at the minute we've got, by the time the radiator gets to there, it's going to have cooled the oil, the air, and then it's going to the coolant. So it's not an ideal situation and obviously it's not that far forward as well which like the city go that's got the intercooler right at the front so the the charge temps and and the coolant temps on the city go even though we're running this sort of power 350 360s are better than the golf that's running 270s 280s so it does make a decent difference getting them sort of far forward close together and only having two layers so on the city go we've got the oil coolers above the intercooler as well. So anyway, this is a cooling package. We're hoping it's going to work. He's, Steph's still going to have to try and get some brake ductings in somehow. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it, but we'll leave that up to him. That's the good thing about doing a job for somebody who doesn't mind having to mess about with stuff themselves, or at least getting somebody else to mess about with him more than uh, Paul or Dan or Owen or anybody here. So this now, it's a brand new engine. Obviously we've got to run it in. So the first thing we'll do, we'll get the, uh, Paul's making loads of noise here, but we don't want to swarf in this new engine. So what we want to do with this is to warm it up and we want to keep the oil pressure up and bed the cam in, rev it straight up to two grand and just sit it there as long as we can, probably five minutes, just to get a bit of temperature in, a bit of oil pressure there and make sure that the cam's not sort of running a bit too dry. Cause if you just start up and leave it ticking over, you've probably not got the oil pressure you need to sort of flood that cam while you're bedding them in because that's quite a lot of friction on that surface that you want to make sure you've got plenty of oil in and nicely bedded in. Then what we'll do, we'll get it straight over to the dyno, try not to drive it at all, straight over there and then we'll put it on some load. So what we'll try and do is uh, see how much usage we actually get over there. It, I'll, I'll clock the mileage and then we'll see what we do, how long we do it and how effectively that's going to be. But basically, if you go for a drive in your car, see how much you can actually load the car up, you'll see that we can do 10, 20 times more than that on the dyno. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. So wherever Paul is with his boost pipe, we'll uh, look at that. So this is what Paul's just been messing about with. This is one of our normal sort of 12 mil map sensor bosses, but we have to drill it out to accept this six bar sensor. I think it's just over 40 mil that you have to drill it to, so it's 40 mil plus a wiggle. That's as technical as it gets in it, Paul. Yeah, but 
we will have these listed on website at some point with a right size hole. Because I think you're sick of drilling these out now, aren't you? Every other job that we seem to get in here, we put in a six bar map sensor in. But anyway, I'll leave this to Paul. It's got a nice little lung, so it just plugs straight in. We're going to get that on, and then this is ready for its little bedding in procedure. So we'll try and record that if we can. But depends how much longer Paul takes to do this. So stay tuned in. So, we're in uh, Steph's caddy now. James has done 10.9, 10.8 mile, I think it, I think it got point 0.1 on it, which was driving it right, yeah, but 10.8 mile anyway, running it in. So, we get asked a lot, how we run a brand new engine in and what we have to do and how we do it. But anyway, when you've got a dyno, you can do it a lot better than you can on the road. You try and drive with a lot of load on the road for any length of time and it's almost impossible. Most of the time you're either coasting or cruising. It's very difficult unless you want to burn your brakes out to put tons of load on a car. So what we've got going on here, we've got to look at quite a lot of stuff if we want to keep things in check. But the main one I'm going to be keeping an eye on is this here. I'm going to keep an eye on the coolant temperature and I'm going to be keeping an eye on the EGTs because really I want to maintain four or five hundred degrees EGTs and I don't want that to be getting past 90, 95. I want to try and keep the heat cycles not too hot to not too cold. So at the minute we've got the controller on the dyno set at 40 which I think in fourth gear is probably only going to be two and a bit grand. I've got the fans which you can't see how we control them but they're controlled off this fob anyway. They're set on now it's on full so to press that to go up to full so I'm in manual and away we go so if I keep popping my head over here I'm just looking at this which is the electric water pump it's not been positioned right good I think that's where Steph wanted it but he never knows what he wants he's always wrong ignore all the lights on the dash he's just not happy that we've unplugged Aldex and all that sort of stuff so bobbing about a little bit So what I'm aiming to do here now is not to thrash the living daylights out of it, but it's also not to be driving it very, ignore this, stop shouting at me, it's not to drive it that gently that the piston rings are getting some load against them. You need to, you need to be pushing that piston down and against the block really hard to wear the piston rings to the bars. So now we're doing the coolant's gone up to 81, 377 EGTs, which I didn't do a bad guess at 4 or 500, because I thought it'd be about that. I'm probably only running quarter throttle at the minute, so I'll increase that a little bit. Because it's all about varying the load and varying the RPM. We're at 40 mile an hour, same we're doing 29 kilowatts. We ought to change that to stuff that we actually understand. So I'll lower the load a little bit and we'll increase the speed a bit and rev through to, I rev through to 45 mile an hour now. So that's 3000 RPM. EGTs are just getting up, to, just creeping past 500. So I'll just ease off a little bit so the speed's not really going to change. We see EGTs are going to drop down a little bit. Coolant temps are still good. Look at what water pump control is doing. So that's nearly maxed out and it's starting to cool down a bit. So I think we've got this set at 80 degrees, so it's it's trying to maintain 80 degrees. So in theory we'll have to run it quite hard to get it past that. So that's going to be harder up throttle. So EGTs are just creeping, we're probably going to end up at 600 and then I'll back off a little bit. that good guess I'll back off just a tiny bit like I said speed's not increase not decrease I'll go up to 50 mile an hour looking at turbos really spooling now uh, 
obviously over on dyno screen, I don't know if you can see from there, but we're at Lambda 1.8, which is fairly at 1.6. EGTs just go a little bit higher than I wanted to, got to like 6, 7 today, so drop speed back down a little bit, vary it a little bit. But the worst thing you can do is at 87 cool, and that's not too bad. Water pumps on, full bar now. So the worst thing you can really do on a brand new engine is just let it sit there idly or just cruising up and down the road. What we try and tell people, eat your trailer up if you can and try and find some hills and get some load on there. Don't thrash its nuts off and rev it all the way around. And don't take it steady, that's the worst thing you can do. So up to now we've done 15.4 miles, so nearly another five miles then in what were only a couple of minutes so it's pretty difficult to even get that sort of mileage in that amount of time and it's definitely impossible to get that sort of load on the car like now nah, that that 15 miles we've done there I dare say you wouldn't be able to get that sort of amount of load on this engine in a few hundred mile on the road I like to pretty much every engine we've ever built fans on full Pretty much every engine we've ever built has only had 50, 50 or 60 miles running them in. Then we drop the oil and just give them hell. But you need to really vary the RPM a fair amount. So there's not really any, any crazy amount of science going on with this. We're literally just going to get some load and just keep an eye on everything. So we've already been out and checked coolant and everything once we'll get out and check that again now turn fans down a little bit again I'll change them bar graphs coolant's at 89 now so that's good at least everything's behaving turn them down give me two minutes so coolant's down at 80 again let's get fans whacked up again coolant we're fine in bottle oil we're all fine there's no leaks anywhere Water pumps ticking away nicely. 47.5 mile an hour. Let's just get it. BGTs are good. So basically, we could go on for a long time. We're going to try and get about 50 miles on this, but it probably wants some fueling. I think James is going to want to swap the tune before we uh, go any further with it got a little bit of data to make sure we make some adjustments and then uh, yeah, we should be good to get it on the road we'll probably be on the road tomorrow whether we video it or not I'm not too sure I might wait until we've actually got it fully tuned and uh, all the creases ironed out on the road get rid of all these lights on dash and make it actually behave but I'm not sure if I've given enough information if there's anything anybody's not sure about give us a shout in the comments and we'll put a link to all the stuff we've done to this and if we get the figures before this video goes out the figures will be in there and uh, everybody will be able to see what this fans going to be capable of. So the cad is sort of half off because Matt and Steph can't listen. Steph got the last little bit of running in done while we were busy trying to get his mark to aligned and get our golf aligned and get the truck built up and everything but anyway We've been pretty busy this morning. So it's done 62.9 miles on the dyno now. Most of that, we a decent amount of load. So like I said before, that's quite a lot of mileage if you're on the road, giving it some ammo. And then what we try to do, if we can, if we're happy, we've had no problems, we'll just do a little pull on the dyno and see what it does. So this is literally a base tune that we made a long time ago. And as you can see, we've shut off at like, 4500 RPM and it would probably be making peak power nearer to 5 so this is pretty much over 300 horsepower as it is 375, 380 foot pound of torque it is a little bit lazy 3000 for peak boost is not too bad but I'm just not happy we are this is coming up here it wants to be a bit more of a lump rather than a trough so this is all good now to get the oil dropped we're going to drop the coolant make sure there's no weird stuff in there put some nice coolant in there and then this is ready for it. it's running about on the road and then get it uh, 
get it on the dyno and get a final tune. But it's going to probably do a week or two's worth of just driving about. So thank you for watching this video. Not sure how we're going to edit it into what context, if it's just going to be about the caddy or if it's just going to be about running engine in. But hopefully it were interesting either way. And yeah, if you want to know what this has got, look at description and comments and uh, ask any questions you want to ask. Thank you.